Well, what we've got today is we've got a Ultra Game Pro uh, Behringer MIC220 or 2200, depends who you want to say. Um, the fault we've got on it is um, on this input here, um, we're just getting a lot of random noise with no no input at all it's just jumping up and down hey, you can probably see a little bit there um, oh no sorry this is the microphone's plugged in ah what an idiot okay so we're just getting a bit of random noise oh there it goes there so um it seems to get worse and so it implies like a bit of a dry joint there but oh so as you can see and if i put this one on on channel I won't say A or B or channel 2 um, nothing on this one yet on this channel we've got some kind of spuracy input output whatever um, and that's on the mic line in oh so without further ado let's just um, take the uh, top off six screws oh, whoa there's nothing in there <laughs> that's pretty disappointing um, Nice to ride off, I suppose. Um, that always helps, um, especially with audio equipment. Um, we've got a board. This is still live, so, but I'm just going to leave it running for a bit. Uh, we've got a board for our, all our audio input connections there. There's a few caps on there which I'm going to have to check. Um, and then it would seem the main board is down there. Um, what if it's a, a true tube operated one, I don't know, because for some strange reason it's got LEDs giving it that lovely orange glow. Um, but let's have a dig in eh, and see if we can find the problem. It might be a dry joint, it might be something as simple as that, it could be a cap, it might be something a little bit more serious. It might even be the said tube. So, um, we're going to have a look anyway. Whether somebody's been in here before me, I don't know. It looks a bit taped up. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like that. Um, these haven't been disconnected by the look of it. Um, there's a little bit of heat coming off the back of that. So, could well be a tube, I suppose. What the uh, the need for the LEDs, I do not know. Let's just flick him around to there. Just show you the front view there. Um, but yeah, the, the noise is still there anyway, so... Let's see if we can find that one. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll strip the front off and we'll have a quick look. Okay, we've taken the, uh, basically this front piece just one clips, um, simple enough. Just three screws holding it onto the base there. Uh, I'd look at some of the joints on the back there, they all look okay, so I'm gonna leave that a minute because I've got a little bit more concern really about this front part really and the channel side that is playing up seems to have a little bit of some kind of there over there now I'm just wondering this is a classic we've spilt some coca-cola in there um, seems to be common with all your equipment that uh, fizzy drinks and DJs don't mix when well, they do <laughs> Uh, but not when they're drinking pop over their equipment. I've had it before where uh, I've had all the buttons all seized up and, um, and usually somebody's dropped a glass of coke or something. So I'll have a look at this little area here. I'll get the magnifier on it anyway so you can have a better look. It's not really helping that, is it? But it does look like there's some kind of verdigris and a bit of burn in there. So I'll have a look at that. And uh, I've just got to work out how to get this out the front. Um, the valve's there. Uh, I might change the valve just a matter of course. I don't know what the lifetime of it is, but I might have a look at that anyway. Okay, let's get that done. I'll see if we can get the magnifying glass onto this area and see if we can have a better look. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of the, uh, the good stuff on the propanol. And uh, I think we'll have a go at it. See if we can just soften this area up a bit. See if it's going to come off. I've tried scraping it a little bit. Um, it does seem to be doing something to it, so we'll give it a little bit of a dab and uh, just see if it breaks it down. It could be, it could be a manufacturing 
clue um unsure but let's let's clean the area up anyway and we'll check that transistor um fortunately uh, the board is sort of repeated on this side um so i should be able to try see through no problem at all because i don't have a circuit diagram i'll have to have a look online whether there is one but um we'll soon see let's just keep dabbing this down with a bit of nice propanol um and see if we can just soften up whatever it is well um not much to repair this one to be honest um seem to have got it sorted um all I basically did, um, as those brothers should do before you jump in too deep, is uh, wiped over all the solder joints, um, which is always a good thing to do, these XLR connectors um, and the quarter jacks, because they're quite large uh, pins on them. Um, they do take a bit of abuse, so you can get um, dry joints on those. So I've done that. Um, it seems to have cured the problem now. Um, I've lost the intermittent, well, the, the crackling noise and the uh, the bar graph just jumping up for the sake of jumping in. Um, I did scrape off that. If I can, uh, <coughs> if I can show you that. Let me just unplug this. Um, bear with me a second. Um, I managed to scrape off that horrible mess that was down there. Um, I think it was just gone off glue to be honest um, it, there does seem to be a few extra traces of it here and there but um, there's some on the actual retaining screws there so I scraped it off cleaned it I couldn't see any um, issues with the components underneath so I do think that was um, purely um, just just um, just the old glue had gone hard sort of thing so but I've cleaned it off anyway I've um, resoldered the XLR connectors and the quarter jacks back onto the PCB. I did change that cap there. It was a 47 microfarad um, 25 volt. Um, it seems to be a coupling capacitor um, for audio. So um, but it, 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 when I tested it on the uh, the meter, um, it read okay anyway. So, but I just has changed it anyway as a matter of. Uh, so 45 microfarads here, so it doesn't seem to be too much wrong with that. But I changed it anyway. Um, it's not as pretty as it, when it was originally, but um, so I think this this repair is basically done. I'm going to soak test it, um, and give it a little play, um, shove it through the amp, and just see if it starts crackling and banging and popping again. But I think really um, this is just one of those typical. Um, through uh, where of the socket the microphone's been plugged in and out I think it's um, just created a dry joint on one of the uh, XLR sockets um, so yeah well, it's a bit disappointing what's in it I was expecting a nice big circuit board in there but uh, nothing so yeah I'm not going to change the tube either um, don't see why it should it works um, seems to be okay I'll give you everything a whittle and a quick wipe over them just make sure there's any, if there's any larger solder joints i'll give them a um a wipe over um with the, some solder uh, but other than that yeah it seems to be working any problems i'll get back to you well i've so tested it for uh, quite some time now and it seems to be working um both sides so that side was working okay on the channel two channel one had the issue whereas these were just fluctuating bouncing around whatever they felt like doing uh, as I say, just a quick wipe over the joints or resolder of the joints, however you want to call it, um, on the XLR sockets. That's probably cured the problem on that. Um, what I've done, I've, I've just put it into this Behringer mixer. Um, just left it running, really. Um, I've only got a cheapy uh, dynamic microphone here, Behringer one, but uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. I'll be clipping there, but uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Just turn the gun down a bit on there. A one two three four five one two three four five five four three two one one two one two yep so that does seem to be working now um i'll leave it running for a bit longer um i can play mr dj while i'm uh, doing it um and i'd say it seems to be uh, okay it's been on for about an hour now and there's been no 
crackling or popping or anything so um, I think we can well and truly call it fixed um, the main reason I bought it really to be honest was um, for my ham radios um, I've bought the uh, PTT button sort of thing um, and uh, obviously um, I'm going to put that on a boom um, so I, I can keep my hands free so to speak other than pressing the PTT I didn't fancy a foot switch so and that's on the uh, ICOM 7 700 um, I've got another two couple of radios there where I might try um, the input on, the, on channel 2 off there as well um, but it just gives me the option then to be use the boom um, and uh, keep a hand free really um, or use a foot switch and you know, keep both hands free um, but I'm going to do some uh, test transmissions later with a friend locally and we can uh, then set up the EQ and all the rest of it in there but obviously it'd be nice to leave this in because <laughs> uh, this has got quite a lot of features but uh, I want to keep it a little bit more simple and just use the uh, the EQ settings on this um, and set up the game for the ALC on the here which I'll probably do a video on that once it's all set up and done. <laughs> 